Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be continuing our air quality series with PLA. But before we get into it, I want to do my standard disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I've never been a doctor. I haven't played a doctor on TV and never been asked to play a doctor on TV. So with that being said, everything we have here is not an endorsement of safety. It is simply me sharing with you guys what I've come to find out from my test. That's it. So with that being said, I think this is a good segue into our first comment from the previous episode. So Gothboy writes in, Gothboy UK, this guy is smart dude. I've exchanged a couple messages back and forth forth with this guy and he knows his stuff. So with that being said, he brought up a couple things. Now number one, this meter is a hundred dollar meter. It's designed to be a home air quality meter. It was not purposely built to analyze 3D printed emissions. So I'm simply doing a citizen scientist number seeing as I mentioned before if I can replicate with this some of the work that has been professionally done. Because that's the other piece out there. The, the jury's already voted. 3D printing does produce ultrafine particles. It does produce uh, VOCs. It does produce formaldehydes. All this stuff is confirmed. Now I know a lot of you guys have written, oh but it's so low Joe but the piece is I think is being missed and what I always respond is one cigarette's not going to kill you it's the habit so this is the piece you know and again this is not an endorsement of safety but if you print one or two things yeah, it, you know, it's probably not a big deal, but if you're like me and a lot of other guys out there and gals like you out there that have, you know, half dozen printers, are printing sort of in a farm situation, there is concern. So, uh, again, I want to come back to this note from uh, Goth, Goth Boy UK. I'll spit that out. So, he brings up the fact, because I mentioned this in the HIPS video, that even though I read zero VOCs, I could smell a sweet smell. And he points out, and he's totally correct, that that sweet smell is styrene. Guess what? And that's pure styrene. And what is styrene? It's a carcinogen. That's bad news. And so it's very clear that this meter saw no uh, styrene. And styrene's also a VOC. There's a lot of things that are VOC, but this is a $100 meter. This isn't going to see all VOCs. It's impossible for a $100 meter with basically a couple chips in it to, to do everything. And so he brings up a very good point because if I read no VOCs for hips, then I underread the VOCs for ABS, meaning ABS is even far worse than what I tested. And I agree with him. I think he's 100% right in this thinking that the VOC level for ABS should have been much higher than what it was. And so therefore, I think most of the measurements that I'm getting from this meter are actually on the lower end of the scale. And this is sort of what I've tried to articulate throughout this is, you know, because people are going, oh, it's so low. And again, I go back to the cigarette analogy. One cigarette is going to kill you, but it's the habit. And the fact is that this is reading more than likely on the lower end of the scale. And number two, I'm really looking more so at the particulates that it's releasing, which is, you know, important. So, with that being said, the other comment that I wanted to get to, and I'm not going to go into this one in detail, I just wanted to call it out because it is quite lengthy. It is actually um, written by Dr. David Light. So, uh, Dr. Dave is sort of, he's known, I think, by his handler, however, um, has does a lot of things in the medical community with 3D printing. I've corresponded with him for quite some time. Uh, rather bright gentleman. And again, he writes in, in very detail here, uh, more so about resin printing. Now, I'm going to cover this when I do my wrap-up of this because we still have uh, TPU and nylon to go. After I do those, I'm going to do sort of a wrap-up where we talk about them all together. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about resin printing, but I really wanted to call attention to this because a while back I did an episode on, um, I purchased a Wanhao Model 7 or Wanhao 7 uh, SLA printer, and I quickly sent it back once I read the uh, SDS sheet and how nasty the resin is. And he actually talks in this, and, and I'll have uh, a link to this. I think it's under the uh, the hips one, but anyway, 
employees. I'll have a link to the, where this thread is. And, you know, he talks about in the hospital where that he's involved with about the several cases uh, of intolation issues, uh, one which was very severe of folks coming in being overtaken by SLA resin. So, again, I'm going to talk about this in more detail in the final version. I, I just, he put so much effort into this note, and this is really a must read, especially for, uh, you know, all the folks out there, uh, you know, who commented on the SLA printer, or if you're thinking about getting an SLA printer, read this first. So anyways, let's get into it. So up there, I've probably been running the PLA versus ABS, my typical thing, uh, for a little bit. Uh, but let's take a look at the, the end results for this. And I'll do some overlays as I've done with the comments. So with this, um, PLA pretty much came out as I thought. However, very interestingly is the parts uh, for PLA came out a little bit higher than even PET-G. And I'm not overly surprised by this, and, and because uh, again with PLA, and, and the other thing I want to say with PLA too is you have to be careful. I clearly do not believe all PLA is created equal. I believe a lot of the especially low cost PLA has fillers added to it. I have some PLA that just to get it to melt, I got to be at 210 degrees. PLA should transition 190 to 200 easy, not 210. So this tells me there's something else in it. So this is where I, you know I would suggest exercising caution with cheaper PLA because uh, you don't know what's in it. And you can see here uh, because I used you know a modest grade PLA uh, for this, and you see you know basically I peaked at about five on on the um, uh, particle scale. And versus one versus pet G. Now, I find this kind of interesting, but not overly surprising. Pet G really surprised me, but I think it has to do with the formulation of pet G and that kind of stuff. And also, as I've seen in in the running of this, you get more particle release on the front end of this than you do on the back end of this for some reason. I've done other tests outside of the ones you're seeing here, and it just seems to repeat itself with the model that early on in the print process you get more particle release than you do at the end. I don't know why and I'd be interested in comments if somebody thinks they know why or does know why because it's your job or something. Love to hear it. Uh, but with that being said, I, I did rate it uh, 0.1 because it did seem to average because again the way I did this I did a two second time lapse um, and I went through and basically, you know, averaged out the frames. And so it did seem to have a little bit of VOCs. And this is where I'm not really thinking PLA should have VOCs in it. Uh, again, Goth Boy or others out there, maybe comment below what your thoughts are. And this is why I keep going back to be careful with PLA because of the fillers. Because intrinsically, and even in the professional studies, um, you know, it, it, they pretty much concluded PLAs pretty much inert except for some particle releases and so you know here it is it pretty much stands true and again when we look at it compared to hips and ABS I mean it's still a pretty low number uh, I would say with regards to this but again to my cigarette analogy one cigarette's not going to kill you but you have to watch the habit so one of the things that I do in my shop is I do run several air purifiers in here with uh, carbon filtration units uh, even with the PLA just to keep it down and actually I haven't gotten around it to install it but I bought a rather big entire room unit I think it does something like 2,000 square feet and my because my shop area is about 16 feet wide by 40 feet deep so it's a pretty good sized area so I bought this unit I will be doing a video on it uh, I just got to get the time to install it and I'll show it to you guys and and uh, supposed to do microparticles and all that kind of stuff. And uh, But for right now, I've got a couple HEPA filters, good size units in here uh, running for when I do PLA. I don't direct vent the PLA. I do direct vent the um, hips and ABS, though, to the outside, as I showed in the prior video. So anyways... Hopefully you found this interesting. Also, feel free to comment below. Uh, love to hear the comments. Got a lot of good comments on these last videos. Um, 
And again, big thanks to Goth Boy UK and Dr. Dave for commenting. I think they were very good uh, comments in the exchange with Goth Boy. Really was insightful on how a lot of this stuff works. And, and again, I really think sort of important to point out that a lot of what I think we're seeing here um, is the bottom side of the scale, not the top side of the scale. And especially when it comes to VOCs, because again, the styrene, it, you know, it, it is a VOC, as I've mentioned already, but again, when you look at the macrocosm of VOCs, there's a substantial number, and it'd be very hard for one sensor to aggregate or sense all of those VOCs. And that's really what's happening here because you notice we're getting a total VOC reading on this, and that's what we're seeing is aggregated across a gambit of volatile organic compounds. So again, I really thank uh, Goth Boy UK for this, and... Uh, Tell you what, comment below. Don't forget, well, I gotta stay on the meter up before I get the other hand. Swag Shop will be up there. Uh, don't forget the subscribe button over there. Comment below, and we'll see you guys in the next air quality video when we do TPU, one of my favorite filaments. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all.